You're listening to Level Up Your Business, the podcast where we talk to hardworking business owners and leaders and help them solve real issues in real time. I'm your host, Sarah Frasca, restaurant owner, keynote speaker, and business coach. I've spent my career not only in corporate America, but also as an entrepreneur, carrying on my family's legacy through my restaurant. Now, a business coach and consultant, I'm helping other businesses to use creative problem solving and innovative thinking to drive lasting change. Stay tuned to hear some inspiring guidance that will help you to level up your business. Here we go. All right, here we go, you guys. Welcome, Facundo, to our little podcast, our Point Northeast podcast. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Thanks for being with us. So um, if you would, will you just share a little bit about your background and then Mike and I can do the same? Sure. So I started in automotive by accident. Um, my family has a mechanic shop in Northern Virginia, had a mechanic shop in Northern Virginia. They sold it and I needed a part-time job in college. So I started there and stayed in the industry that I thought I would never be involved in and have been from private, from a uh, family-owned business. I opened a body shop. I started a, a detailing shop. I sold those. I moved into government fleets. I uh, was a director of fleets there and then got uh, recruited by, depending on who you ask, if you ask somebody in the government fleet sector into the dark, you know, to the dark side, because I went to the private side um, and started working for tech startups um, that are, have a lot of technologies that focus on government fleets. And the reason that I joined the tech startup world was because there are some super smart people on the tech side of the world, but they know nothing about fleets. That's where I come in. Um, so I started working for a company called Fermata Energy uh, about eight years ago when I transitioned. Uh, it was me and I was the third hire. It was me, two other guys and a whiteboard. And here's Fermata Energy. And here we go. Right. And now they're, they're doing really well. Uh, they created a bi-directional DC fast charger, which unloads energy from an uh, an electric vehicle pushes it back into a building. And then I moved over to um, a company called Revo Technologies, where I am now. We created hardware and software that go inside a tire that can alert fleets in real time when they're having a problem uh, with tires. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, well, there's indicators in the vehicles that tell them that. Well, yes, but a lot of times drivers, particularly fleet drivers, don't care. So that's why they have to know at a kind of central level. Mm -hmm. um, so we created that technology and... Uh, yeah, we've been off to the races here mm. for the last four years. Well, thank you for keeping our roads safer. That seems like a pretty, I would say, like necessary component. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. uh, interestingly, um, here's an interesting little fact. You know, when you guys get in your car and you have the little light thing that says your tire pressure is low, that's mm -hmm. mandated on light duty vehicles, not on the heavy side. You can imagine if you have a flat tire in a vehicle driving down the highway on your you know, SUV, Maybe not a huge deal on a garbage, you know, on a, tr on a truck carrying garbage that's going, you know, weighs 60,000 pounds. That could be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking back to all the times, you know, doing road trips as a family where there's like a tire that has exploded and like the remnants are all over the road and people are yeah. dodging it. And I mean, it's a, I can imagine a pretty dangerous thing to have a tire that's not being monitored. So. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. And so you live in my community um, and that's how I got the chance to meet you. So thank you for that. And thank you again for being on today. Um, sure. So, you know, we both live in kind of this Northeast Florida area. It seems like the secret's getting out as to how special this little zone is. Yes. Uh -huh. It's uh, how long have you been I, here, by the way? I thought you said you weren't going to tell anyone. About what living here? About how special this area is. No, I'm. Teasing. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the name of the area. I think we've only said Northeast Florida so far. That's right. Yeah, I wasn't saying it either. <laughs> but, uh, well, enough. There's so many people coming to Florida. Yeah, I know. So I know. Uh, I've been here for what five, just over five years. What about you? It's great. I've been here for twelve, and I love it, and I'll never move. Um, and Mike also lives in Florida, but on the other side of Florida. West coast. West coast. It's like West Coast, East Coast. Exactly. Which, like which, which uh, so where? Uh, uh, Sarasota, uh, just south of Tampa. Yeah. I've really like to... been here for about 12 years as well. So Nice. We would often go to Siesta Key when we lived in Virginia. 
Yeah, yeah, right. Cool. Popular spot. So I think, as you well know, our idea with this podcast is to help business leaders, business owners to kind of propel them forward. And so the question that we want to ask you today is what's keeping you up at night? And so I'll give you a minute to think about that. I would say, you know, our premise with Point Northeast is to hopefully help every client take their business up and to the right. And that means kind of, you know, incremental improvements over time that really help them to scale or to grow their revenue or to grow their retention or to have a better balance. A lot of times people are, you know, they've started a business, um, whether they're the actual founder or they've been a part of the leadership team and the scaling has kind of gotten so out of control that they're no longer doing the things that they love, the things that they do the best, or they just have an unmanageable, unwieldy you know, business. So our goal is to help folks like yourself. Um, and so if you'll indulge us with your answers to those questions, our job live and in the moment is to try to help you solve those challenges. Yeah. Um, Mike's chuckling because I don't ever want to know ahead of time. It's like, that's the fun of this. <laughs> what fun would it be if we knew ahead of time? So we ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. So what keeps me up at night and it literally has actually, I've had a couple of nights where I woke up like at three in the morning and that thought is in my head and can't go back to sleep. So it's, did I miss something important? Right. So did I miss, you know, as a tech startup, which, you know, we're definitely going like this um, with new customers coming online. Um, you know, did we miss something in their implementation process? Did uh, you know, technology is fantastic when it works but it doesn't take much for it to knock it down, right? Um, so it's what, you know, am I, do I have all of the resources functioning right now to alert me, to tell me that something's not right with this customer? Mm -hmm. um, and it could be any number of things, right? It could be mm -hmm. just something as simple as uh, that truck has a tire that's been driving down the road and it's got all of these warning bells and nobody's doing anything about it. Why? Um, or it could be, um, hey, I forgot to set up this customer um, with an email alert. Maybe it's my fault. I think that's probably the number one thing that, that mm -hmm. would keep me up mm -hmm. at night because it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on right now. And I would guess, like many businesses, it's sort of like, you know, you add to the system, you add to the puzzle uh, more and more pieces, but you're not necessarily taking away. It just like gets to be more and more and more. So there's probably a lot of components that you have to remember. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the um, most of the way that these uh, customers are set up um, the same way. So now it started getting me thinking about, you know, how do I, as head of customer success, kind of start to break up the way that we're doing things. Um, you know, one of the things is, uh, that I started thinking about is uh, we need to have one dedicated person to nothing but implementation mm -hmm. over the course of say 90 days. Right. And, you know, all of these things have to happen during the course of 90 days. Then you have a customer success, whatever you want to call them manager that's in charge of all these, you know, checking in with, with these fleets and doing, you know, quarterly or monthly reviews. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the only way that you keep, your customers engaged. What happens if, you know, their, their portal is not looking okay. It doesn't, our technology, um, it, one big problem in the fleet world is that there's way too much data. There's, there's too much like, Hey, I'm going to throw a bunch of data at you. Uh, but it really doesn't tell you anything. It's just a bunch of data. You got to go figure it out. I, I want to be the opposite of that. I want to, I want to say, Hey, you've got this truck with this problem right now. Or you've had this problem for 15 hours and here are the implications. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason I share that is because you don't necessarily need to see user activity on our portal to make sure that they're engaged. But if the condition of their tires isn't great, then something's going on. Right. So I have a follow-up question on that. So when you say what's keeping you up, that, that did I miss something? Are you talking about potentially... I forgot to call someone back. Or are you talking about part of the implementation process or, or a combination of, of everything? All of it. The whole game. All of it. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. as Sarah said, there's so many coming in, then it's 
what do I, you know, did I forget to set up that email for that person? Did I forget to check in with this person? Um, whatever the case might be, it's just, um, you know, there's only so many spreadsheets that you can track everything, or, you know, HubSpot or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so that was going to be my next question was just kind of what systems are you using? Are there um, project management software, emails, text messages? Like what are the communication and organization systems? Yeah, so the, the way that we primarily communicate with customers are automated reports or alerts in real time when they happen. Um, assuming they're taking care of them, great. But then we also have a customer health score that that I help create, which is, you know, you're looking at their portal and if it's got a series of uh, tires that have a certain condition or people haven't logged in or they're having not doing this, um, then that score gets worse. Right? And then that's how we know checking in with them. Um, you know, hey, you haven't uh, looked at this particular vehicle in a while or, uh, you know, that, that kind of gives us a little bit of. Uh, an idea of how to check in with with them. Um, the place that we keep all of this is HubSpot in, in terms of the notes, right? We don't have a customer success um, program that helps us centralize all of the key customer success metrics at the moment. Uh, that's kind of, you know, spreadsheet here, notes here, notes somewhere else. Um, that's one thing that I think we definitely need to to improve on. Any things that, and, and I'm not as familiar with HubSpot, so that's, um, I may have some questions that are like dumb questions, but for someone who knows it, this would be easy. Do they have like checklist, like the opportunity to build a checklist in HubSpot? I think that there are different checklists and things that you can do. I haven't used them yet. I mean, it's a pretty good tool, uh, much like uh, I imagine a lot of folks that have Seth Training uh, is probably needed a little bit more on, on our end, on, on my end in particular, uh, to make sure that we're utilizing all those things. But I, I would assume they do. Okay. I have yeah. – oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I think, you know, and I guess I was – I've used HubSpot, uh, HubSpot years ago, so I don't know if it's maybe a ground. But from, from my recollection, it was a uh, customer acquisition marketing um, tool for for basically bringing that client in in the door not necessarily taking care of that client once they were here right so has that changed no that no i don't I, I really don't think it has um okay. i think it's primarily a um just like you said it's it's a customer acquisition making notes along the way i think there's probably some hack that you can do to create a list to help you with the customer success side but i don't think it's a customer success software I know that they have a lot of plugins that you could use, uh, but we don't have that plugin customer success specific at the moment. So I have, and, and I don't know if this is controversial or not, but I've used HubSpot, um, had great success with it. We moved to a different platform, which is a series of um, programs that, that integrate with each other, and it's called Zoho. And so uh, HubSpot is a very is a, is a great tool for what it does. Uh, what I like about the Zoho uh, suite of it's about 40 or 50 different programs that will work together. So you can actually uh, use this as an operating system for your entire business. So it has sheets and forms and project management software and checklists and all these different things so that the work will automatically flow and you can create those, you know, those automations like this score gets below X, we're going to notify this client and, and, and build in all of those uh, safety traps. There may be, and I'm not. I'm not suggesting you switch your your you know your proprietary program that you have invested, but there may be some some use in either picking up some of the Zoho or 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 X Y Z platforms to help you uh, build those those processes. Um, and then the second thing that I have, and and I don't know that I have much on this because full disclosure is I wake up at three o'clock in the morning all the time with uh, with crazy ideas. So if we solve it. I'll be sleeping in, uh, but the, the uh, I think the other thing is time blocking. So, you know, what happens and from being an entrepreneur 
you're you're working on something and then this you know you get pulled in a million different directions and for me that's what always keeps me wondering like did i did i forget to do this or did i forget that especially when you're doing a critical task like like client you know implementation so uh time blocking uh, you know getting used to putting your your phone and do not disturb and saying look i'm going to complete this project to its fullest extent before i go there sounds like fantasy land but um for me it was a necessity uh, especially when you're doing something that has, you know, real, uh, you know, real downside if you get it wrong or if you leave a piece out. Uh, you know, again, I, we, I'm an automotive nut. We, I race cars and doesn't all sorts of, uh, all sorts of things. So especially, you know, if I'm in the middle of doing something on a race car, the last thing I want to do is have my phone go off and, you know, for somebody okay. who needs something, did I forget to put this back together? Right. So. Yeah, I, I've actually. Um... Not that I've uh, ever successfully been able to multitask, um, but, you know, thinking you can. Uh, but now more than ever, uh, I try to actually keep myself from trying to do multiple things at once, right? Because just like you said, the importance of taking, uh, I'm not sure if, if I can share this, but I can just share a major national brand that we're working with, we're deploying and they have a bunch of each individual sites. That's one that I don't want to drop the ball on. That's been primarily 90, 95% of my time. Um, I try to focus as much as I can. Like you said, I'll, I'll maybe turn off, like we use Slack. I'll turn off Slack messages because it makes a really disturbing noise. Um, so I'll turn it off until I can complete a particular task that I know that I need to get done today. Um, you know, because... Uh, I think there's this book out there called Stolen Focus. I heard uh, some uh, conversation that he was having on, I think it was like NPR or something like that. And he was saying, uh, you know, if your phone, if your phone grub goes off and you have a text message and you're working on something and you look at the text message, it takes you something like 15 to 20 minutes to get back to where you were and just multiply that a few times a day. You've got a huge, you know, completely inefficient day. And I'm sure that happens to all yeah. of us. I think it's worse as, as I'm getting older. It's, it's I think it's more like an hour to get back to what it was. It's just <laughs> yeah. once you lose focus, it's so hard to you know re, re pick it back up. And, and then I think there's some some tools like uh, again software wise, Asana was a was a free project management tool that we used and it was really good for checklists, especially for I was in the fleet business for for a number of years. So uh, you know having a, a CDL uh, driver go through their their vehicle properly and make sure they're checking their vehicles. And, you know, the point that you made about, you know, the in, a vehicle that has dual real wheels, no one is ever checking that inside tire pressure. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And if you put the hoses on so you can connect it easier, it's just, you're guaranteeing that you have a leak. It's a, it seems to be <laughs> a nightmare of a process. This always scares me from a, like a non-fleet person just driving on the highway. Like this is, Every time I talk to Facundo, I'm more and more convinced that they need to mandate that these big trucks have this device because it's just scary. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I love the time blocking, Mike. That's really good. And I, I need to do more of that. You know, the checklist has been invaluable in my world. I would say not only with Point Northeast and with our kind of our coaching of clients, but also Facundo and Mike, you both know that I own a restaurant and you can imagine I, I don't spend a lot of time at the restaurant any longer. So making sure that things are getting done has to be documented. It has to be kind of um, systematized. And so, you know, I, I think we've developed a pretty good system and a, a really good set of people. But I'm going to mention one system that a little business up in Ann Arbor, Michigan used that I love. Um, and whether or not it gives you an idea or you want to use any part of it, I think, you know, that's up to you, of course. But they had this is a restaurant based business and they have a lot of different um, entities up in Ann Arbor and they have like a two sided checklist. And so if you come in and you're just an everyday, you know, individual contributor, you're checking everything off. And when it's done, you flip it to green. And so like the very bottom and the very top have red and green. And again, this is a very physical thing because I'm talking about kind of a brick and mortar restaurant, but maybe there's an application. So you check off like, yeah, I washed the windows and I did the bread or whatever has to be done in that facility. And then you flip it to green. And so then the manager or the supervisor is in charge of making sure that all of those forms are green. And so they have to actually 
pull them out and double check everything, keeping it green before they can put theirs to green. And so like the general manager or the owner or whatever, like you can kind of see how the layers of people are checking the checklist of someone else. And so I think, you know, this is kind of my personal philosophy. I never want anything, especially when it's safety related, to be reliant on someone's memory. I mean, it's like right. that's the worst case scenario because if someone lost their cat this morning or their grandmother was ill or whatever, like they might not be in the right mind frame to remember that the oven has to be turned off or the door has to be locked or the knives have to be put away. I mean, I'm again using safety things because I think we can all relate to kind of how important that is. But if you've got the checklist, then they don't have to think. They can, you know, think about their artistry of serving their guests or doing the things that really matter, making sure that, you know, the artistry of serving, I guess, is my point, is done perfectly. But they don't have to remember that they have to hang the aprons over here and they have to do the light switch at the nighttime and make sure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the tedium is taken care of. Um the redundancy, I think, is another good point. So I'm like kind of a little bit concerned, like who else is thinking of these things on your team? I feel like you've got a lot on your shoulders, like thinking of all these things. Who else that's a part of the team can be a part of that burden with you? And whether it's people below you or people above you or a system that holds it in place, like I would want to make sure that like, you know, these are these are things that can be documented and double check so that you don't have to be the sole person with all of this weight in your backpack. One other, one of the thoughts here I was, as you were talking, came to mind during the meeting. Uh, we just had a meeting uh, recently. We did an exercise called the Mind Wipe, um, which is uh, I don't know if this is proprietary information that I'm putting out there, but it was really, really, really beneficial because we we sat took three minutes wrote down everything that you're thinking about and that became my my to-do list and and I, I found I find that to be uh maybe a really good tool for uh I still am working on that list from that day <laughs> <clears throat> gotta do it more often so you get three a minutes I, I, you can't imagine life. how many things you can come up with in three minutes I need to do it in like 40 seconds because there's too much stuff there but anyhow yeah, yeah making making that list might might help you proactively you know in the morning where you're where you're writing things down and just reviewing that, you know, or adding to it as you're going through. I, I know these are these are kind of elementary, um, you know, scenarios, but ultimately, your as you're building the company, it's going to be, you know, leveraging technology and, and, and you know, documenting those processes so that there is nothing left behind. You know, it's, it's uh, your, uh, I really right. like the idea. Yeah, I, was say, I really like that. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I really like the idea of. of you were saying your manager in the restaurant where you had several checklists that they or the something that they turn green and then once those functions are done then then they can turn theirs green i'm just thinking about for us when you're having a site deploy um if somebody else is managing them coming online or whatever the processes are or whatever the steps that we have to go through then it's just for one way for me to know yep that was done and now they're ready to to move their you know the function you know the uh, maybe they're past their implementation stage. Mm -hmm. Did you lose Facundo or is that just me? So now we can move him from yeah, no. to over here. Now, these, did we lose you? Okay, you, you Facundo, you percent. froze for, yeah, just, just okay. say that part over again. Okay, so I was saying, which, where did, where did, where did I freeze? Hmm. Left. <laughs> Left. Oh, when I did this. Yeah. Okay. Put your hands okay. over there again. I know exactly. Yeah. Okay, right here. Okay. So, <laughs> oh. oh, you know what I was saying was moving from one list to another. So, like, if you yes. completed the implementation, and then you have to go to, okay, now we have to bring in the customer success manager, and they're going to go through setting up the quarterly reviews or monthly reviews or whatever, or you know, check-ins with this person or check-ins with that person. They can move from one list to another, and you just start a new list, but it's kind of an ongoing list. Mm -hmm. You know, we work with a lot of law firms and they have specific software for this. So it's kind of like, rest assured, if you're a client of a law firm, they've got you covered on these things because the software holds their hand. So what I was going to describe for you, and if you have any interest, um, I'm sure we have a client that wouldn't mind showing you kind of, you know, a blinded back end so that you can see what this looks like. But I was thinking, 
when you become a client of a law firm and they know, you know, different components, the system is pinging the lawyer to say, don't forget to get the medical records or the police report or the whatever. And so the person no longer has to remember everything because the system, again, holds their hand. So I'm kind of wondering if, you know, like a HubSpot plugin or something has the type of project management that would get you through these stages. And, you know, it's like if you wake up at three in the morning, you just glance and now, you know, like, okay, everything's done. And then pretty soon you can trust the system. So you don't have to worry anymore or your customer support manager doesn't have to worry anymore because again, the system has got all of the components. Um, yeah. That makes a lot of, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that um, this is like a new topic, but I'm excited about this is that, you know, you want to incent the right behavior. So if your team or your clients need to do certain things at certain stages, you give them an incentive. So it's like the old, you know, carrot versus stick philosophy. Like you could give people a carrot to get them to go a little faster or to do something, or you could give them a stick, which is a consequence for not doing something. So for example, um, in the scenario of an employee or of a client, you might say like, hey, if you get all of these things done by X date, we will give you 5% off your next month or 5% off for the rest of the year or something. Or for your employees, you get a $100 bonus or something like that. And so again, the idea is how do we maximize everyone remembering and getting everything done? And I'd love to get it again off of your back and onto the kind of appropriate areas because you shouldn't be babysitting clients to do these very important things, especially when you can give them a, a, a small carrot or um, something that makes you know it easier or better for them. Could be Amazon gift cards, could be discounts, could be extra bonus options to their package. Yeah, we've thought about. I think we've we've actually done like um, something we've been working on is uh, one thing is like a, a friendly competition amongst your peers or fellow customers. Like, hey, this fleet is performing at ninety three percent, right, or whatever. You know, you're at eighty nine, and you might be in the same facility. Right? Like, we have a lot of Amazon customers, and so these two Amazon customers might be in the same facility, Amazon DSP, like the vans you see driving to your house, your houses. You know, we see those, uh, we, we have our technology on some of those. So, uh, you know, if they're in the same facility, yeah, I get an opportunity to talk a little trash, right. Have a little fun, like, Hey, I'm at whatever. Um, that's one way to do it. But then, you know, I mean, I, the idea of the more involved they are with different parts of your, uh, you know, solution, the stickier it becomes to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're empowering them to care, right? They're either incented to do it or disincented to not do something. So right. I like that. <laughs> and what I was going to say, I think once, once you, once you organize these scenarios, for me, it's the cup is only, can only hold so many, you can only hold so many things in the top of your, you know, in your conscious, as far as what I need to do. Once you, clear that space up, it allows that creativity to come up and you're you're able to transition from working in uh, in the task to being working on the task. And that's where, you know, you're you're much more effective. I love that. Um, I remember, so going back real quick to my, uh, the mechanic shop that I started working in, it was a really nice shop and it had two levels. Um, I always tell the story. So it's, uh, so downstairs was like the main office and then upstairs was like the owner's office, like my dad's office, he never used it. And then we had like a, another sh a room for like the technicians where they could like change and have lunch or whatever. Um, so uh, I learned from, I can't remember who shared that, that exact thought with me, working on the business versus in the business, right? So every time I hear that, it takes me back to the shop of, I remember I started using that office and like, because for example, yeah. you know, you could, my dad, everybody lo loved him and, you know, he was, he was great. You know, we, they would, Bring the shop, their vehicles to the shop all the time. They would trust him, and you would you could ask him, "What's that person's name? What's their car?" He would know everything. You could ask him, "What did you pay for a gallon of oil?" He has no idea, but he could sell a million of them. Um, <laughs> you know, so so I think that that difference of working in uh, on the business versus in the business is huge. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I almost would love to see you in, along this vein. You know, that it becomes 
other people's, and I'm going to use the term problem, but I, I, I don't mean that to be completely negative. I mean, like, how can you put this on the other teammates of yours, as well as on the clients? And again, you're doing that through an incentive or a disincentive, like, and then you become the second checker, right? Like, and then you're coming in behind them and it becomes, hey, how can I help you get 100%? How can I help you be sure you're never missing anything? And so you are their safety net rather than having it be there a little bit of your safety net. If they remember great right now, but really ultimately the buck stops with you, I would say, how do you flip that model so that it's their responsibility and you are in service to them to come in and try to coach them and help them and there's an incentive and you are the kind of the helper, mm. not the ultimate person that's responsible. Yeah. So, um, okay, I was going to switch gears a little bit to the part where you said there's too much data. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I have a fix on this one, but I would say um, we, again, we we just met with a client that Mike and I absolutely adore and they're amazing and they have so much data. And so, you know, I think um, the, you know, the KISS philosophy, the keep it simple, Sarah yes. model. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, the more we can distill things into the simplest form, the better we'll be able to understand it, relay it, have others understand it, etc. So, I mean, if you're able to rise above and kind of work on the business instead of in the business, I mean, it, the analogy that I think is used in Traction is the book, great book, Traction, is imagine yourself on a deserted island. Imagine that, you know, the, the cabana boy or girl brings you a lovely beverage. You've got the little umbrella and you have no internet access, no phone cell service, no anything. You have no way of knowing how your business is doing, except for once a week, they bring you a little piece of paper and it has key facts on it. And it tells you whether your business is doing well or doing poorly. So what's on that piece of paper? Is it the revenue? Is it the number of new clients? Is it the retention of your team? Is it the number of people coming to your website? Like what is on that piece of paper? And so it's got to be simple, right? Like one to seven facts. And that's how you start. So like distill it down, make it as simple and, you know, concise as possible. And then you know, the, the, the facts kind of waterfall through the organization, but for the customer service or customer support, customer health team, it's probably, you know, five things. And so really distill it down. And those key data points will tell you more about your business than loads and loads and loads of data, which just give us almost analysis paralysis, right? Is that the term? Paralysis <laughs> by analysis? I don't know. Anyway, right, yeah. so keep it simple, Sarah. Like I'm not very smart. So you're know. saying I just you get... keep it simple. <laughs> no, it's okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, because your audio was choppy, but I heard I heard everything. But you guys can hear me. Okay, good. We can so, hear you. Yeah. Um. So are you are you saying so two sides to that to the mm -hmm. customer or internally for us what we're digesting that's coming from the customer? Well, I would say both. I mean, I would say anytime you feel like there's too much stuff, like too much data. Right. You got to keep it simple. And so it could be the top five facts for your customers, and then they can drill in and get more information if they need. But maybe the, you know, kind of like alert um, thing is simple enough to say, like, you've got red, red light alerts, or you've got yellow light alerts, like they have to be attended to in the next week, or you will be into the red category. Um, for our well, that's teams. The, that's exactly. So the way, oh. the way you described it, sorry to cut you off, it's exactly the way that we characterize a lot of things, right? Red, yellow, green. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is just to give you an example, the way that tires work, especially on a large truck, if the temperature drops, so will the air pressure, and it can go past a threshold. So if you receive an alert for every single one of those tires, and the question is, which one do I do first? You know, so... Um, we do have ways that we're starting to filter some of those things out uh, in the way that the customer receives it. For example, we'll, we'll sum it up on a report on the next morning as opposed to giving them an individual alert for everything because that just destroys an email. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, doing that, um, I think, has really started to help 
cut down on on that data overload, right? And the way that we mm-hmm. present it to them, um, that's something. You know, and it's interesting because a lot of customers, especially with this, is somewhat new to them. This live tire management, um, they're like, "No, you hit me with everything," and then they're like, "Please make it stop, right?" Because <laughs> there's so much. Um, and so, and and I mean, I've had conversations with you know folks before. They're like, "No, no, no, really, hit me with everything," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll I'll look forward to talking to you in a few, in a few days," um, you know, because we'll have to change the settings. But um, but yeah, absolutely, you know, keeping those 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 basic sets of things the uh, you know keep it simple sarah um as you said. <laughs> so yeah doing that i think that'll um you know that definitely that'll definitely and when we've been doing like i said we've been doing a lot of that actually because it's just uh especially with the newer customers that have you know thousands of tires at their one facility and so it's like you know imagine getting an alert for potentially one of those you know or even half of those you know that's mm-hmm. 500 emails Right. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say as the system gets, and, and I don't pretend to know anything about the tire pressure sensors, but um, it feels like it should know if the tire pressure is going down, but that's because of the temperature. Then it's not a red alert. It's just like a, hey, we got to keep watching this or something. I don't know. Does that do that? It, well, so sort of. So the thing is okay. that, you know, um, <laughs> I love, uh, I need to stick you in a room with some of our engineers to have that conversation. Yeah. And so good. here's what's really important. Here's what's really important, right? Is that um, the tire doesn't care whether it's ambient related or it's actually a leak because the tire pressure is what actually carries the load. And if it's overloaded, that's when a tire can explode potentially. Um, and so, but then it's just a matter of, okay, well, I have a thousand tires. I have some that are leaking and some that are just low due to ambient. Sort those for me. Mm-hmm. That's the one, like, that's what we're working on in real time. Yeah. Right? Let me help you better sort that. So if I need to hit a magic button that says, hey, I've got one technician available that can do five tires right now, which five do they need to do? Yeah. No, that's amazing. Because I'm thinking like, you know, it, it could also sort like, hey, this tire's location is in Miami. Like, that's why the tire's hot. Or the tire's in Minnesota, northern Minnesota. That's why the tire's cold or whatever. Like, it could. Anyway, yes. Put me in a room with your engineers. I would love that. I would love that. That'd be fun. Um, Facundo, this has been helpful for me. I, what do you think? Have we question for me or for Mike? Yes, this question. Oh, for you! Me. I want to know if yes. we've solved some of your challenges. Yes, I really like the. Um, uh, I have this visual. I'm a visual learner, so as you were describing that green, you know, turning things green, and then somebody else turning things green because then they're responsible for overseeing that. Um, I had a visual of what that looks like. You know, one of the fun things about having a company full of engineers and techie guys is that I'm like, Hey, I have this idea. Can you build this for me? They're like, yeah, hold on. Um, And so that's something that, and and, and here's actually where, where we have to really think about it is the guys, you know, some of my colleagues have a hundred percent the ability to build something like this. The problem is, is that takes time away from stuff that they're building for for us. So then it's like, well, I'm sure there's an app for that somewhere. So let's go find it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think just, you know, just that one key takeaway for me, it's, and like you said, it's fairly simple, but I really hadn't thought about it in that way. Um, so, you know, I think that's one key takeaway for me. Mm, Great. And and keep it simple, Sarah, that is trademark and copyright, by the way. Okay. Gotcha. (laughs) You can use it anywhere. I will. She's going to charge you a quarter each time. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to mention that there's a. There's a copyright. Yeah. Well, truly, thank you for trusting us with your your business topics and challenges. And hopefully you get a little bit more sleep and this isn't yeah. waking you up at night. So well, only a few times a month. Okay. All right. Maybe. Oh goodness. Okay. Well, we'll check back with you and see if it's helping. Very good. Good. See you guys. Mike, nice you. Thank you as always for being a part of this with me. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yes. Facundo, thank you. Both of you you enjoy our beautiful Floridian day. See you around the neighborhood. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.
Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Level Up Your Business with me, Sarah Frasca. If you have a problem in your business that's keeping you up at night, please join us in a future episode so we can help get you unstuck. Just click in the link in the show notes and send us a message. Please remember, stay innovative, friends.